Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're taking a look at how to go from this to this. Now this is essentially a recreation of the amazing work over at the Connor Campbell studio. So I don't take any credit for coming up with this. I just tried recreating it and thought I'd share what I learned. This is actually surprisingly simple to achieve in After Effects. So we're in After Effects over here and what I'll do is I'll just start by creating a new composition and call this main. Um, let's say 1500 by 1000 pixels, 30 frames per second, press OK. What I want to do next is just drag in some sort of logo or a piece of text that we want to work on. I'll just go for this Nike logo here, the stock standard of every design spec project. And you guessed it, what we'll do next is pre-compose this logo, right click, pre-compose, move all the attributes, call this logo and press OK. This now means that we have a pre-composition, we can change out the logo later on and the effect will stay the same. This is a procedural workflow, try to get on that. So the heart of this effect is called the compound blur. So I'll go over to my effects and presets panel over here, or you can also go and look for it over here. But what I'll do is I'll just search for compound blur and drag this onto our logo pre-comp. Before I forget, I also want to be creating a background. So I'll just go over to layer, new, solid, call this BG for background, make sure it's comp size. I want to make it black and press OK. I'll drag this below our logo, obviously. And the way this compound blur effect works is it references what's called a blur layer. So we have this drop down menu here and right now it's just referencing itself, which is why we have this undesirable effect going on. But the beautiful thing is we can create our own blur map and tell the compound blur to only blur the parts where our blur map is white and leave all the black parts alone. So I can just go over to layer again, new solid and call this blur map, press OK. I'll, I'll actually make this white, press OK, press OK. And I'll also pre-compose this for good measure. Right click, pre-compose move all the attributes, press OK. And now I can try out referencing this blur map instead of our logo layer. Press this. I'll also have to disable this, make this invisible so we can see. And you can see still not what we're going for, but we're getting there. Everything is now blurred, obviously because our blur map is completely white. If I just enter this blur map, you'll see we just have this white solid. But if I now select this layer and go over to the ellipse tool, for example, and then just drag out some sort of shape and then press tab to go back to our main composition, you can see we only have the blur effect going on where our ellipse is. So you're starting to get the idea, right? If I go back into my blur map and maybe press F for bringing up the feather property and then just cranking this up till we get a smooth little blob, then go back, pressing tab. The effect is starting to take shape. If I now go to the effect under my logo layer, compound blur here, and just crank this up, it's starting to look pretty cool. What I did in the original example, I think, was just option or alt click the maximum blur setting. This will bring up this expression box and I can just type out the most simple expression After Effects has to offer, which is the wiggle expression. Just go for wiggle and open parentheses and I'll just go for something like 10 times per second, comma, and let's do 50 in the blur amount. And this will just add this flickering effect, which is nice. Maybe it's a bit extreme. I'll reduce this to 30. Yeah, that's better. Okay, collapse this, beautiful. Now the next thing we wanna do is add some movement to this. So whatever we do to this, remember, will affect the blur. I can do this in one of two ways. I could do it with the motion sketch panel I showed you last time. By the way, if you don't see this, go over to window, motion sketch. So I could just press start capture and then drag this around and it will just record my mouse movement and create an animation from that data. But if I wanna have some more fine control, I'll just undo this. I can bring up the composition property by pressing P and clicking the stopwatch and then just going through my timeline and dragging it to all sorts of different places and just have a bit more fine tuned control over the way I want this animation to look. I'll also select all these keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them and maybe even go into my graph editor here click this, select all of them again, and just drag over this handle to make the animation start a bit more harshly. 
Cool, now if I go back to my main composition, remember, press tab to navigate between the pre-compositions and just play this, you can see we're pretty much halfway there. But to get this cool fiery color effect, what I can do is just go over to layer, new adjustment layer, call this color, and then add the colorama effect. This is kind of a wacky effect, but for things like this is really cool. You can see it's just crazy right from the get-go, but if I go to output cycle, select one of these presets, maybe clay, you can see the effect is starting to look a bit better. I don't remember which preset I used for the fire one. Uh, maybe it was fire. Yes, it was fire. <laughs> okay. By the way, if you want to showcase your work on social media, I just released a new motion template over at my store. So feel free to check that out. This is essentially the look, right? I won't show you exactly what sort of values I put where. I don't even remember that because I, what I want you to do is always experiment. This is the basic setup. You can do whatever you want from here. You could go into the blur map and then just, you know, change the form of this as well, not only the position. I think this is something I did in the original example. So I can just bring up my mask by pressing M and putting a stopwatch on this mask path as well. And then just go through the motions and adjust this by dragging around these dots, just creating different shapes to give this a bit more life. And then when I play this, you can see it will just have a bit more character. Now, the amazing thing about our procedural workflow is that if we go to the logo pre-comp, you know, just delete this and then create a new piece of text, things will automatically update. And now we can fine tune this, maybe make it a bit bigger. Nice. Also play with different color settings, maybe choose a different one. Um, it's kind of cool. Try ramp red, for example. This gives you this really simple look, also cool. You get the idea. So you now have three different ways of customizing this, right? You could either change what's in the logo pre-comp, so change what's being affected. You could change the color layer by also maybe applying a glow or something. Let's look for that. Effects and presets, glow, drag this on. Maybe drag it on before the colorama effect and then just crank up the radius. Change it back to fire. This is a bit intense. Drop down the intensity. That's cool. So you can do that or you could also change the blur map. So you have three ways of affecting how this whole thing looks. What you can also do, for example, is use some sort of stock footage. I just happen to have this ready, of course. Drag this in. This is just footage of someone spinning a basketball and then tell this to reference this as a track mat, which will essentially act sort of as a clipping mask. We will now only see this footage layer anywhere where this blur map is visible. So where this ellipse we drew out before is visible. This will now look something like this. Doesn't make a huge difference, but we can see we have some nice grain going on. If we now look at this in the original animation, this will also change the way this looks. So just try to play around with all these sorts of things and achieve something that's um, tailored to you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.